So there are a lot of details behind the numbers, and joining me now to help sort it all out is Stephen Gu, the director of U.S.-China Business Advisory Services for consulting firm PYA. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Michelle. So, Stephen, as we said, Hong Kong's IPO market is set to have the highest dollar value of IPO offerings more than any other exchange in the world for the second year in a row. Why is the IPO market so hot there? Well, I think there are several reasons. One is the fundamentals is improving. Um, if you look at the short term and the long term rate, it remains very low. And uh, there is unlikely the rate will be raised by a Federal Reserve Bank. And also, the worries about China economic growth rate and the sharp uh, depreciation of the renminbi are receded. And also, the negative impact of the um, negative influence about the British exit of Europe is, uh, is lower than expected. And the second reason, I think, um, is the competition from the Asia market uh, are, are lower, than, lower than expected. So it gives the Hong Kong market uh, some advantages. Uh, because I think there are still lingering concerns about the uncertainty and the volatility of the Asian market. As you know, last year, there was five-month suspensions on the Asian market, Asia IPO market. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, there are two suspensions during the past three years. So right. uh, I'm not saying the suspension is bad, but I think, the, I think suspension is necessary. However, the frequent suspensions and resumptions we have caused lots of uh, uncertainties. Uh, as you know, there are almost 800 Chinese companies are on the pre-IPO list in the, in the, in the Asia market. So it, it caused lots of uncertainties to these companies. You know, they don't know when their company can get IPO'd and uh, what is the market going to look like when they get IPO'd. So they have to look in for alternatives. And on the other oh, hand, Stephen. on the other hand, Hang Hong Kong has gained lots of momentum since uh, September of last year. And there are quite a few sizable IPOs, and uh, really the market sentiment has been improved a lot. And the valuation was up, and the, uh, uh, and the Hansen, uh, Hansen index was actually uh, up for 10% during, uh, during the past three quarters. Right. So, you know, you uh, compare Stephen, the Hong let's, let's focus on the bigger picture, and let's look at Hong Kong's economy at large and the impact that that's having, because Hong Kong has just been ranked as the world's freest economy for the 22nd consecutive year by U.S. think tank Heritage Foundation. Uh, coming up on top of the economic freedom in rule of law, limited government, regulatory efficiency, and open markets. So Stephen, do you agree with that ranking for Hong Kong? And what impact does that have on the IPO market? Uh, totally. I think uh, no, Hong Kong has been consistently ranked as number one of the most free market in the world. And the second by, you know, I think the Singapore was the second, and New Zealand was the third. So I, I think for lots of companies, because it was a free flow of the capital and uh, very sound legal accounting and financial systems in Hong Kong. So lots of companies have international ambitions. They want to look to Hong Kong as their IPO venue. Well, one of the things that could be a possible issue here is the proposed shakeup of the Hong Kong IPO market uh, regarding how they approve the Securities and Future Commission and the Hong Kong Exchange want to streamline that listing process and make it more transparent. Firstly, do you think that this is needed, and do you think that this will indeed happen? Yeah, I think it's definitely needed, but there are no fundamental changes. You know, basically, they created quite a few committees. You know, the, now we have policy committee, regulatory committee, review committee, this commission committee, and they add lots of disclosures. You know, um, and then for listed issuers, they, they now need a business overview, and there are some non-gap disclosures. So, uh, it's definitely needed for the, for the quality control, and uh, potentially they, this will bring a good, uh, uh, re, uh, good, really good returns for the, for the, for the, in the future. Well, currently there is a listing company uh, which is made up of bankers, lawyers, company executives that approves or turns down these IPOs. All people, might I note, that benefit very much so from a hot market. If these regulations are enacted, it would limit their role. So what impact would this have? Well, I think uh, I don't think this will have impact their role. I think you know, just the regulation will be changed. That does not mean these these kind of requirement will be eliminated. So I think it will be benefit for the for the whole market. The market will be more healthier. All right. Well, one thing that's impacting the market certainly has been uh, the Hong Kong Shenz uh, Stock Connect, and now there's the new one with the city of Shenzhen. It's been approved, uh, and it's expected to be launched soon. What do you think that's going to mean for the IPO market? It will be huge. Uh, this is going to definitely boost the market. I think it will be 
probably be, be launched in November or early December. Now this will give the access to, uh, to the Hong Kong capital market to uh, a number of technology internet companies in, in Hong Kong, I mean in, in Shenzhen, and also it will attract the international institution fund to participate in the Asian market. So they're gonna boost the liquidity. I think it will be, it will be win-win for both markets. Yeah, I can see that. Now, you're speaking of tech companies. We've got reports that Ant Financial, the online financial services giant controlled by Alibaba's Jack Ma, may list next year, and they may do so in Hong Kong rather than the New York Stock Exchange where Alibaba listed. What's your take on that? Well, I mean, uh, for, uh, as you know, I think a lot, there are lots of suitable uh, IPO market, but uh, for, a lot, for many Chinese companies, their value was not recognized by U.S. investors. Alibaba is one example. Even, even bigger company like Alibaba, it takes some time to, to have the U.S. investor realize how big is the value of the, of the company. So I think it, make, it makes sense to have the, uh, have the end finance to list it in Hong Kong because it's close to the homeland and uh, close to the, uh, the investors going to know the, this company better. Stephen, very quickly, we touched on this earlier. The Hang Seng is up over 8% year to date. What's your outlook? Well, I think it is, uh, the momentum is going to continue for the, for the Q4, and uh, we're going to have a great year. All right. Thank you so much, Stephen Gu, Director of U.S. China Business Advisory Services at PYA. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Michelle.